this week, we kind of <coughs> come to a, a point where we're comparing, we're comparing two guys. We're going to compare Adam and we're going to compare Christ. And, and, and one man brings death, one man brings life. And, and, and we're going to continue on this sermon series through Romans in revolutionary righteousness and how this righteousness is transformational in our walk with Jesus. If you would follow along with me, we're going to be in Romans 5.12. We're going to read through to the end of the chapter through verse 21. You can follow along on the board or, or turn in your Bibles. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, in this way death spread to all men because all sinned. In fact, sin was in the world before the law, but sin is not charged to one, one's account when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin in the likeness of Adam's transgression. He is a prototype of the coming one. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if by one man's trespass many died, how much more have the grace of God and the gift overflowed to the many by the grace of the one man? Jesus Christ, pardon me. And the gift is not like the one man's sin, because from one sin came judgment, resulting in condemnation. But from many trespasses came the gift, resulting in justification. Since by the one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive the overflow of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? So then, as though, as through one trespass, there is condemnation for everyone, so also through one righteous act. There is life-giving justification for everyone. For just as through one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so also through one man's, dis, or one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. The law came along to multiply the trespass. But where the sin multiplied, grace multiplied even more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace will reign through righteousness resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We start off the, the section of scripture this morning with a therefore. And you know my saying about the therefore is you got to know what the therefore is there for. So we, we take, I, I know, I, I love that little, little, <laughs> you kind of twist things around. You know? It's such a Paul thing, isn't it? We can get a good example. Um, but the therefore, you know, we, we take what happened last week and, and how faith triumphs, you know, and it's about faith and not works, and it's about the grace in which we stand and that we've been declared righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ. And because of all this, he says, therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through the sin, in this way death spread to all men, because all sinned. You see, sin entered through one man. Sin entered through Adam. We go all the way back to the beginning, and we find out that, that Adam, you know, God had given Adam a command not to eat of the tree of, at the center of the garden, the knowledge of, of good and evil. Eve was... Tempted by the snake, ate it, gave it to her husband. Adam didn't say a word, just ate it, <laughs> and fell, thus disobeying a direct commandment of God. You see, sin entered in this way through that one man, Adam. And because it, sin entered through that one man, death entered through sin. Okay? Because God pronounced that when you eat of this tree, Surely you will die. Sin entered through Adam. Death entered through sin. And death comes to all because all have sinned. And it's ironic as it is. It's not ironic. It's not coincidence. My Uncle John and I were talking about this Friday. 
there are no coincidences. There, there's no such thing as a coincidence. And, and the fact that we're talking about sin and death this week, you know, that, that question has run across my mind as, as we were traveling and I'm, I'm trying to study for the sermon and I'm, I'm out of my element and I'm having real kind of trouble trying to process all of this stuff because there's so much on my mind. But this, this whole thing in verse 12 kind of comes to the forefront of my mind and, and it's like, why do people die? Why do people die? How many, how many times have you asked that question? Why, especially when it's somebody close? You know, I, three of the four grandparents of mine are now gone. I've got one grandparent left, and I haven't talked to him in 25 years. I've got one great grandfather left, which is a miracle in and of itself. You know, I mean, that's just woo. <laughs> you know, he's you know pushing mid 90, mid to late 90s. So, you know, great grandpa Roy. But, you know, when somebody close to us dies, we always go through these. And why does death, why? You know, Hannah asked that this week. She goes, Dad, if God knew, if God knew that man was going to fall, if God knew that man was going to sin, why did he create us anyway? Ooh. Profound things coming from an 11 year old mind. Uh, I, I mean, I, I looked at her and I said, honey, if I had the answer to that question, I, I just, God wanted somebody to love him. That's why he created us in the first place. Even though he knew we were going to fall, even knew he knew Adam was going to sin, even though he knew that death was going to come through the sin and that death was going to come to us all because of this. He created us anyway. Because... He wanted somebody to freely choose to worship him. And it is through sin and it is through death that we have a choice. Okay? We have a choice. Why do people die? Because sin entered the world through one man, Adam. Death entered through sin. That is why people die. There is no one that is going to get out of this alive. There is one thing guaranteed in this life, and that is you are going to die. That is, and the problem is, is that it's not a comfortable subject to talk about, especially on the border side of my family. That's just, that is a subject that just, we just did not talk about. Death was a very, very sore subject, and it is with a lot of people. And as, as I've kind of gone through my life, I've realized that, that it, is, it is, in fact, not just something with, one or two people. This is something that is very difficult to talk about with a lot of people. So let's talk about it. Death is real, folks. You're not getting out of this alive. You can't change it. And you cannot change it. There are two people on the face of the earth who never died. Enoch and Elijah. Mm -hmm. Two out of, you know, there's currently, what, seven billion people on the earth right now? How many more than that have lived <laughs> throughout the ages? And two <laughs> Two have never died. Even our Savior died. He faced it. My friends, he knows exactly the terrifying thoughts that go through your mind. He faced it in the Garden of Gethsemane praying, Father, if this cup can pass from you, please let it. You know? Why do people die? And that's because of sin. <laughs> 13 and 14, he kind of moves on a little bit. He says, in fact, sin was in the world before the law, but sin is not charged to one's account when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even though even over those who did not sin in the likeness of Adam's transgression. He is a prototype of the coming one. You see, sin existed before the law. Sin existed when Adam sinned in the garden. That's when sin entered. And it existed before the law, okay? Even though it's not charged to our account when there is no law. When there is no law, there is, it's not that sin didn't exist, but it's just not charged to our account until the law appears. It's not charged because, of, because the law just hadn't been given yet. The sin is there because God's ways are always there. God's, God's laws are, 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 are a, a, you know, they, they spell out 
they spell out God's ways and what is right and wrong. And, and sin exists, but the problem is, is that there were no commands there to be directly violated. You know, and, that's, that's, and that's exactly what that means. It says, um, even over those who did not sin in the likeness of Adam's transgression, even though they may not have violated a direct command of God, they were still sinful. Sin still existed. Death still happened. It was, um, I believe, in, in that time frame that Enoch was um, saved. He was just taken up to heaven. You know, it goes through the genealogy there in Genesis, and it says, and he died, and he died, and he died, and he died. And then with Enoch, it just says, and God took him. Hmm, interesting. Death, sin and death reigned prior to Moses, even though they may have not violated a direct command of God. You see, Adam, Adam was the first aversion, faulty, sinful. Adam was the first version of the man, and Christ was the second version, see, perfect. In his case, never committed a sin, always kept God's commands to the T. He was perfect. And here Paul is comparing the two. They're being compared, my friends, as heads of groups. And as we go through this, keep that in the back of your mind because we're going to come back to that here in a second. But... Paul is comparing these two as heads of various of these two groups. Okay. Verse 15, uh, um, Paul moves on and he, he's going to kind of kind of do some comparison, but it's not really it's not really a comparison. It's actually a contrast because Adam and Christ couldn't have been more different. I, I mean, it's just you know. I kind of struggled with that this week. You know, it's like, you know, Adam was man. It, it, it really kind of isn't a fair comparison <laughs> because Adam was mere man. Christ was not just mere man. Christ was man fully, but he was also fully God too. So, I mean, it's, it's it, it kind of not a fair comparison, but it is kind of a fair comparison because we see that, that, that it is a contrast Instead of a comparison here. And it's, he, he says in 15, he says, the, but the gift is not like the trespass. And that's our first contrast here. The gift is not like the sin. And here he's going to compare death versus grace. He says, for if by one man's trespass the many died, how much more have the grace of God and the gift overflowed to the many by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ? Who that is a mouthful. Paul's starting to kind of, he, he's, he's kind of starting to, 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 to dive in on us, okay? Trespass, Paul, I tried to look that up, look this up this week, and I, I couldn't, for some reason, I couldn't find the difference here. But he switches back and forth between two different words for the word sin. One, one is trespass and work, and one is sin. Now, the translators do this, and I know why they do this. They do this to get at the fact that Paul's using two different words, even though they mean very similar things, if not the same thing. So, you know, while there appears to be a difference there, there kind of isn't that I could find. But he, he's, you know, he, we're talking about sin and trespassing against the ways of God is what it is. And he says, the gift is not like the trespass. The gift is not like the sin. He says, for if by one man's trespass, by one man's sin, Adam, by Adam's sin, many died. Okay. Death entered the world through sin. If by one man's sin, many people were brought death, how much more have the grace of God and the gift, Jesus Christ, overflowed to the many, to these same many who have been condemned with death now, by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ. 
See, it's a gift. It's free. But also keep in mind, as I, I said in weeks prior, faith isn't just words. Faith is an action. You, 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 you find somebody that has faith in their actions. Okay? Salvation is purely a grace of God, though. It is by the grace of Christ that... <clears throat> That gift has been spread to everybody, or made available to everybody. Verse 16 is our second contrast here. He says, and the gift is not like the one man's sin, meaning Adam's sin. The gift is not like Adam's one sin. The gift, Christ, grace, salvation is not like Adam's sin. And here he's going to compare judgment and condemnation versus justification. Okay? He says... Because from one sin, from this one sin of Adam's, came judgment. Whenever, whenever we sin against God, there is a judgment that is demanded by God. Because God cannot exist in the presence of sin. And therefore, there has to be a judgment. There has to be judgment passed for this. Okay? There's no ifs, ands, or buts. So from this one sin came the judgment, and that from that judgment, it resulted in condemnation. In other words, you've been convicted. The judge is, has, has found you guilty, and that's all there is to it. Because Adam's one sin, judgment and condemnation have come to all. But, it says... From many trespasses came the gift, resulting in justification. I, I gave this little blurb um, the first week of the sermon series in January, and I want to I read this again. <clears throat> it says, in response to our faith, God's righteousness is imparted onto us through justification. Justification is being declared legally righteous. Being continually renewed through the process of sanctification. Sanctification is the process of being made into the image of Christ. And that is where we pick up when we pick up back in April. In a month after this, we pick up with the process of sanctification. Okay? Until the transition from earth to heaven upon which the righteous state in which has been imparted to us catches up with the state of justification and sanctification process completes upon which becomes glorification, which is the process of holiness completed. You see, thus far, we've been talking solely on how we have been declared legally righteous in the court. In the court of God... In the almighty high court, we have been declared legally righteous if we come by faith to Jesus Christ. Okay? We have been declared legally righteous. However, does that mean that we are righteous in our actions? No. That, my friends, is the process of sanctification. That is where faith, that's where the rubber meets the road. That's where faith is in action. Because if the process of sanctification, if you are not improving upon who you were yesterday, then the process of sanctification is not being completed. And therefore, you haven't been declared legally righteous. The process of sanctification is, is, is to kind of go old school on you, it's the proof in the pudding. <laughs> It, 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 it is. The sanctification is the proof behind the faith. Okay? So we're talking about justification. We are talking about being declared legally righteous here. You see, from that one sin, from Adam's sin, death came. And because death came, judgment came, resulting in a guilty verdict, the condemnation. 
But through many trespasses, Paul says, through the many multiple tra trespasses that have occurred in the human time on earth, <laughs> came the gift <coughs> of grace through Christ because of him it results in that verdict going back to the court of appeals and being overturned that that guilty <laughs> verdict has been overturned and you have been declared not guilty because your debt has been paid in full what's required obedience where we talked about several weeks prior that Paul hammered home and kind of made us feel guilty. Well, yeah, but that's, that's, what, that's what it is. Required is obedience. Verse 17. Since by the one man's trespass death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive the overflow of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? You see... By Adam's sin, death reigned. Now we're going to compare death and life. And this is our third and final contrast here. You see, by Adam's sin, death came into the world, and thus death reigned. Death reigned from Adam to Moses, even though the law hadn't existed yet. Even though it hadn't been charged to our account, death still reigned. Okay, And he says... Death reigned through that one man, Adam. How much more will those who receive the overflow of grace and the gift of righteousness, both gifts, reign in life through one man, Jesus Christ? If death reigned through Adam and Christ brings grace, Christ brings justification, Christ brings life how much more so will we reign in that life you see through his power we have the ability you see what happens is that it becomes a choice verse 18 so then as through one trespass there is condemnation for everyone, so also through one righteous act there is life-giving justification for everyone. <coughs> as through Adam there's condemnation, thereby Christ's one righteous act, the sacrifice on the cross, there is justification available for all the problem is is that it is not guaranteed to all you see if i went out if it was your birthday and i went out and bought you a gift and i sat here and i had this gift in my hand it's my gift in order for you Ave, in order for you to accept the gift, you have to reach out and take it. Now it's your gift. But if, hey, but if you never reach out and take that gift, and you turned away from that gift, oh, what did she think about? that's still my gift. You haven't reached out and taken hold of that gift. See, that's where the responsibility comes on our part. That's our deal. See, although there is condemnation for all, there is also, by Christ's death, justification available to all the penalty does not have to be paid by you for your sin jesus paid that penalty and he says in 19 he goes on oops i just covered up the verse there it is verse 19 he goes on he says for just as through one man's disobedience the many were made sinners so also through one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. You see, Adam's disobedience, all are made sinners. By that and by Christ's obedience, the many will be made righteous. We're talking about a legally 
declared righteous in the court of God. Okay? That many will be made righteous. Verses 20 and 21, he goes on, he says, The law came along to multiply the trespass, but where sin multiplied, grace multiplied even more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace will reign through righteousness, resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, the law, the reason the law came along was to show us what sin was. Because it can't be a charge to our account unless the law is there and given and, and there is accountability with it. Now that the law has come, there's accountability with it. But now there's also even more condemnation and, and, and justice demanded by God. And, and even though it was there in the beginning, it is now charged to our account. And because it's been charged to our account, oh my, there needs to be some payment made. Because there is a huge debt racking up that we are not able to pay. And in order for people to come to God and freely worship him, there <laughs> has to be a payment made so that we can make a choice. So just as sin reigned in death, so grace will reign in righteousness and that results in eternal life through Christ you see Adam brought sin he brought death he brought judgment he brought condemnation and Christ brings grace righteousness justification and he brings life and implied here my friends is a choice you remember I told you to kind of keep in the back of your mind that, that we're talking about Adam and Christ in comparison as to two different groups of people? Well, this is where it is implied that there is a choice to be made. Because we can choose to live through Adam in sin, death, just, uh, not just Adam, uh, um, condemnation and, um, and judgment. We, we can choose to live in that way of life. It's, it, it really is our choice. If that's the way we want to live, if we want to, if we want to go along and satisfy the fleshly desires, if we want to go along and, and, and um, deny the existence of God, if we want to go along and, and deny that um, there is a payment for our sin there, that, that is purely our choice. And God allows us to make that choice. But you see, Christ is the, um, uh, the head of another group. And Christ is the, uh, uh, the head of a group that brings life. That brings justification, grace, and righteousness. And, and as we continue on through this, this sermon series, we're going to see... We're going to see that, that, that the righteousness that he imparts isn't just declared legally righteous in the court of God where we have been legally declared righteous but righteousness is also the exists in the process of sanctification where we go through this process of being made into the image of Christ more and more you see we come back to that 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 faith righteousness and obedience and, and we're, we're really we've kind of gotten faith and obedience down you know you, we have faith and obedience here but we're, we're kind of like i said in the beginning we kind of get stuck here in this righteousness and, and the problem is the reason we get stuck in righteousness is because there are so many different levels to righteousness that we just either either not explained or if you're the teacher the other teachers are like me they have a tough time explaining it because it's just it, it's just a difficult concept to put down in words but you see thus far we've been talking about a, a legally declared righteousness where where we have been legally declared righteous by God or by Christ or yeah by God through Christ but there's also another aspect 
to righteousness that, that involves, very much involves obedience. And it very much involves changing the way we think and the way we act and the way we do things. And that's, that's where we're going next is the fact that, that we're going to see that we cannot, you know, even though grace multiplies because there's sin and, and the more sin there, you know, it, 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 the more sin there was, the more grace multiplied. Well, that doesn't mean that we can go out and freely sin whatever we want. God's just going to gonna forgive us. No, that's not the way it works. There is a responsibility on our part to take action to change ourselves. God provides the power. He provides it. Uh, Corinthians. He says that... I, that he, you know, Paul says that God provides a way out of temptation when it comes. Well, my friends, that implies a choice. The choice is ours. We can follow the ways of Adam to death, or we can follow the ways of Christ to life. It is, it is, it is literally a life and death decision. There is no other way about it. And as we continue towards the end of April, we're going to see this process of sanctification. We're going to see how sanctification, justification, and glorification fit into righteousness. And, and all these different levels of righteousness come together to put a picture together that is absolutely beautiful. That we can literally see ourselves the way God sees us. That we are, we have legally been declared righteous. And when we realize that we've been declared legally righteous, that changes the way we think. It changes the way we act. And therefore, that it completes the process of sanctification and we become more righteous in what we do. Not that that righteousness is going to save our butts. It's not. It's, it's just not. But that's the fruit of the vine, my friends. That's the fruit of the spirit that lives in you. You see, the big idea for today, Adam brought death with one sin. <laughs> one sin was all it took to bring death. Christ, with his death, brought life to all who will choose him. And my friends, I lay it before you that that choice is yours. That choice is yours. There is no other way to go about it other than put it on the table that it's a choice. That, that, that it's all about him. It's not about you at all. It's not about you at all. So if there's one thing that I've, I've learned, you know, it, it, that's where this has helped me this week is the fact that, that we all make our own decisions. You can't force anybody to do anything. You know, and that's, that's where um, I know my uncle battles. He, he battles with that. Is that he, we can't make people's decisions for them. It is a choice. And, and, and as we kind of put this together, that, that, that life is a I mean, that it's Life is a series of choices, and, and you know, we, we people make their choices in life, but we put it into the bigger picture. Well, yeah, people make their choices. And my friends, the decision is yours. And, and if, if we come to the table and we come to this, this time in the service where you know, we offer an invitation and you keep putting off making a decision for Christ and my friends not making a decision is literally making a decision not to follow him. Don't let your indecisiveness decide for you. Not just on where you're going to spend eternity, that is part of it. But the fact that you can have eternity right here eternal life starts here we can have that stand with me sing with me hymn of invitation we're going to sing softly